Hi everyone. Many of you might already know that I've been working on a parts and components management website for a few weeks now. I've mentioned it and showcased it a few times on my streams and I've been tweeting about it on Twitter and posting it on Patreon recently, but I thought it was time to do a quick video to show people what I'm up to and for those of you that haven't seen it before or didn't even know I was making one to have a look at what I'm working on. So it's very much a work in progress still. It's got a lot to go but I've been making some pretty great progress. The whole site revolves around managing your parts and components whether it's electronics components, whether it's hardware, things like nuts and bolts, whatever you want. You can basically set up parts and stock for those parts and projects. So let's have a look at the parts system. Right now it's not showing me any parts in the database because I've got my filters set to none. I could click all and it shows me all of the parts in my database and it's paginated 10 to a page. Or I could pick individual categories. So if I go back to none, I could say show me all of my resistors. Now resistors shows me that I've got two types of resistors. I've got chip resistors and resistor network arrays. So I could, again, I could choose both of those if I wanted to or I could individually just choose the one I want. And because I've only chosen one category, it then shows me the footprint types I've got for that particular category. And again, none is set by default, but you could default it to all if you wanted to. So I could say, have a look at all of my 0402 resistors that I have parts for. Now this doesn't show me my stock. This shows me what parts I have in my database. Each part has its own stock. I might have this particular part, this is the manufacturer's part number, but I might have it in multiple locations. So for instance, if I click on view, it expands it out and it shows me that I have a reel of 10,000 of them that were bought from LCSC. This is their supplier link and I've currently got it on one of my reel racks and it's on the red rack. And I've also got a hundred of them that are loose. Don't know why I'd have resistors loose, but they're loose and they're in a tub which is on my couch. <laughs> you can define any location type and any location for that type. And I'll show you that in a moment. It's also showing me for this particular component any of the specs about it. So it's showing me that it's a, a 1 8 watt power plus or minus 1% tolerance. It shows me what projects I'm currently using on. So my Pro S2, my Tiny Pico, my Tiny Pico Nano. It's tagged ROHS, manufacturers Uniroyal Electric, there's no manufacturer URL that I've entered, but there is a datasheet web link that I can click on and it'll open up a datasheet for it. In this case, the datasheet is pointing at LCSC because that's where I grab the data from for this particular part. I can edit that part if I want to just by clicking edit and it automatically fills the details down below. I can turn around and put a description if I want to. I can change the specifications for these parts. I could also add new specifications if I wanted to, so I can click add and I could make a specification that says uh, color. I don't know why I'd do that for a resistor, but color, it's now there and I can say this is silver and black, <laughs> as most resistors are. And I can update the part, and now if I look at that particular part, it shows me color, silver and black. Now that specification I've added was added to the resistor type. So if I go and view this particular resistor, even though there's no color setting in here because I've not entered a color for it, if I edit this resistor, there is a color category now. And uh, I seem to have a bit of a bug where it's not reset these values for me on the fields. I need to do a clear on those, oh well. But as you can see, I can then put a different color in and save it against that one. Adding parts is super easy. You can either add the parts directly in here if you want to, or I've added a feature where you can scrape the part from LCSC. So let's grab a new part. I'm going to grab one of the parts that I use, which is my USB-C connector. That is the part code on LCSC. So I can grab that, click LCSC, and it goes away and comes back with all the part details already for me. So it's a USB type C, it understands it's a connector, a USB connectors for the categories, it's an SMD, there's no particular footprint for a USB connector, I guess. And then it grabs all the specs and puts them in here for me. I can say, okay, this is for, I'm using it on a Pro S2 and I'm using it on my Reflow Master Pro. Great, so I can now add that part. And now I've got, in the connectors category, if I just go none, 
connectors, I've now got screw terminals and USB, where before I only had screw terminal, if we go all, you can see this is the new USB connector that I've put in. And then if I say, great, that's my part now on a grab stock. So I ordered 200 of them. So I'm gonna go plus for the stock and I can put the supply code in if I want to, which is just their URL. So I'll do that here. It's from LCSC, I've got 200 of them. They are on tape and they are in a tub. And the tub is, okay, the tub I want isn't there. So I'm gonna create a new one. So the tub is Reflow Master Pro. I can add that location and now I've got a tub called Make Reflow Master Pro and I can add the stock. And now you can see that I've got a stock item. I will be introducing QR codes for these. So you can see here, this QR code does not show the correct code that actually says, hello world. If you want to uh, scan that in now, it was, or I think it says hello. So yes, but I will be um, supporting QR codes for scanning and printing somehow. We'll see how we go. So that's how you get parts into the system. What's if I go to add a part that I've already got? So if I was, for instance, to go to this particular part code, and if I look for that code, it says it's already been added. It lets me know, and then it selects it for me. And it selects it the resistor, chip resistor, 0402, and it highlights it for me. So there's no chance of accidentally entering a part twice. So that's great. What about projects? So I assigned that USB to my projects. So if I click on the projects view, these are all the projects I've got in the system right now. And it shows me a number of parts for each project. If I go to my Pro S2, click view, it gives me a list here of all of the parts for that project. Basically, it's a bomb, right? It highlights right now in a pretty awful color, yellow, orange, whatever it is, any parts that I don't have stock for. So that way I'm visually aware that if I wanted to build one of these boards, I don't have any stock for those. Now what I can do for this, because as you see, I added a USB type C connector to it. I can edit the bomb quantities and say, okay, there's one of these in my bomb, All right? So what I'll be able to do in the future, there's a button for it, but it won't do anything yet, is I'll be able to do a pick list. So I'll be able to click pick list and it will print me off a list of all the parts I need and where the parts are. So whether it's on the real racks, whether it's on the pick and place or not, it'll let me know where they all are. I've also got the ability, although it's not currently functioning, to tell it that I'm building a certain number. So I can just say, hey, I'm building five of these boards. So I can enter five and build, and it'll go and deduct all the parts for my stock according to my bomb list based on five boards being built. There'll be other ways to reduce stock as well, but that's the way I've got them right now. And at any time from here, if I wanted to, for instance, uh, go to one of these parts, like this one here, uh, this 32 megabit flash chip, I'm not actually using that in my Pro S2 anymore. I'm using 128 megabit. So I can click view to go back to that part. I can edit the part and turn off Pro S2 and update it. And now if I go back to my projects, it's no longer in my bomb list. So there's still a lot more work to do with the projects, but it's coming along really well. And of course that's also paginated. You can create as many projects as you want. Now, if we look at the stock view, there's not a lot you can do on here right now, but the stock view filtering works the same way that the parts work. So right now it's showing me all of my location types that I've got parts in. Not all the types that I've got in the system. It doesn't show me any locations that I don't have any parts in because that's pointless, right? But what I can do, for instance, is I can say, I want to go to my real rack and I want to go to my, what's on my red real rack? So I look at my red real rack and I go, okay, cool. Um, I need, let's say it's this particular part, right? I want to move this to the pick and place machine. So I can say move and I can move it from my real rack to my pick and place machine and I want to put it into feeder five, but I don't have feeder five set up. So I can just, while I'm here, go PMP, feeder five, add location and move it. And it's now in my PMP in feeder five. And if I go all, this shows me all of the things in my feeders. You have the ability to move stock around. 
because I move reels onto my pick and place and off the pick and place all the time, I want the ability to be able to move things around. So at any time I can look at my pick and place and see what's loaded on there. Once I get all my data in, obviously. Or I can go and say, look at all the tubs I've got, right? And I've got a lot more tubs than this, but here are all my tubs and I can say, hmm, I wonder what's in the tub on my floor. These are all the things in the tub on my floor. So if you know what the part is, you can go look at the part and find out where it is. But if you just wanna know what is in this particular location, you can get a list of all the things in that particular location. Now, you may have noticed that the whole entire time I've been using this has been single click with the mouse and or my finger. So one of the key things that I set out to do with this particular website, which is different to pretty much every other website that I've seen and used for this type of product, is I wanted this to work on a desktop browser, I want it to work on an iPad, and I want it to work on an iPhone. I want it to work on a Raspberry Pi 7-inch little screen. So everything about the website is fully dynamic in terms of its layout. So right now, this is would work perfectly fine on my phone. I can even say all. I can see all of my parts list. As you can see, the content that I'm seeing in the list changes based on how far or how much I close the view down. But I can still, with a single finger on a phone, use this whole system. I can even go and say, I want to add a new part. And so I'm going to say it's going to be a, a diode. And I look in here, and I've only got Schottky barrier diodes right now. So I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call it a signal. Give me a signal diode. And all of a sudden now, I've got a signal diode in the system. right? Everything that you do is single screen, not once has it, has it reloaded the page while I was doing any of this. I can even go and say, you know what, this is gonna be going on a new project. So I'm gonna create a new project here called Tiny Pico Pro, let's say, and add. And now there's a Tiny Pico Pro in the projects and it's automatically chosen for me. I can even add new tags if I wanted to, right? And then when I save that, the new part type is there automatically for me, as is the projects. I can create new footprints. I can create new footprint types. So you pick a category. So for instance, right now there is, if I go to QFN, these are all of the QFNs that are in here. I can either manually create new ones, or this will be added to automatically when I scrape data from LCSC. Now, the reason I chose LCSC is because I use them for probably 95% of my parts. Sure, I get some parts from DigiKey and Mauser and Arrow, I can obviously add parts in manually if I want to, but because 95% of the parts I get is from LCSC, I've built this so I can enter data really easily. I can take any part from here and just as quick as I want to, grab that, add it in, it generates, in this case it created a transistor category for me which wasn't already there, it created a MOSFET category that wasn't already there, it worked out it was a SOT and it was a SOT 723, it created that for me, it did it all for me. And I just say, add the part, actually. I need to pick what it's gonna be for. This goes on my Tiny Pico, and it's on my Nano and my Pro S2. And I add the part. And adding parts is as simple as that. There's a fair bit to go still, functionality I wanna add. Um, right now, the dashboard's pretty empty. There's gonna be a whole lot of stats on here. This will show you a list of any stock that you have inside projects that you're running low on. Right now, I'm kind of focusing everything on what I need and what I want to help me solve the problems I need to solve with my stock management. And my assumption is that those things will be very similar to majority of other people out there. One thing to be clear on with this site is that I'm targeting this for other makers and small setups. This is not gonna have a lot of the functionality that some of the bigger sites already have, like PartKeeper or PartsBox. At the end of the day, if you need a lot of high-end functionality like team management or stock attrition or stuff like that, then there are other tools already out there for you. This is designed to be something that's going to be super useful to other makers, whether you've got 50 or 60 parts in your workshop or whether you've got 1,000 parts in your workshop, whether you've got five locations that you keep them or whether you've got 500 locations, it doesn't really matter. In terms of scale, this doesn't matter, but in terms of the, the target market, it, this is designed to be for makers and smaller teams. I call myself a small team because of the level of manufacturing I do. So I figure if this can do everything I need, 
then it's going to pretty much do everything that a maker needs and anyone else that's in my level of manufacturing. So this is called My Parts. This will be a public facing website when it's done. Right now I'm still working on it. There's going to be a lot of questions about when it's going to be out and how it's going to be accessed and lots of stuff I know. I'm not ready to discuss anything about those things right now. My focus is to get the website done, get it in production for myself. As you can see, there are parts in here and the data is real. Even the stock locations like on the couch and on the floor, they are actual real stock locations for me right now because I have parts all over my floor and all over the couch. I've got tubs everywhere. So this is the reason I'm spending so much time working on this. So my aim right now is to get this finished and then I'm happy to talk more about how I'm going to deploy it. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, thanks to all my patrons. You're awesome. It's your help that allows me to spend time to work on stuff like this. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.